At some point in your Affinity Photo for Reality lifetime, you're going to want or need to create a true black and white from a color image. It's going to happen. You're going to be like, hey, this would look so much better as a black and white. This is a really simple process in Affinity Photo for iPad and then we could use a tool like the HSL adjustment tool, hue, saturation, and lightness inside the adjustment studio and remove the color saturation values like this. This is a quick and dirty way of doing the job. It does get the job done. Well, sort of. So we're done, right? Uh, not. This will create a lighter version of the image where the blacks have been reduced, but are not true blacks. All we've done is remove the saturation from the image, which includes black as a color. So while this would have created a black and white looking image, it would have lacked the punch that the black values would have given it, and the resulting image would look washed out in the process, which is not what we want. So in short, we do not want to use this to generate a black and white image. So how do you create a black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad? Easy. Follow along this tutorial and I'll show you a four-step process to do just that. However, before we get started, if you like these videos, please remember to hit the old thumbs up. It helps out the channel and tells the YouTube gizmo machine that this is an important video. Not to mention, it's also a nice thing to do. Also, it should be noted that everything that you're seeing in this video can be done with the desktop version. It's just that the menus and positions of functions are geared towards a non-touch interface. The functionality, on the other hand, is exactly the same. In order to show off this technique, I have created a clean, color-balanced, color-corrected image that's ideal for black and white conversion. If you want to follow along, I've linked that same image down below in the description for you to download. So, let's get started creating a black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad. Step 1. Make certain that the layer is selected from either the photo or selections persona in the layer studio. This is a common error that a lot of people forget to do and creates a lot of headaches for image editors. However, if you only have one layer at this point, you can also just select the layer with the Move tool. That's the second icon down on the left that looks like a pointer. It should be noted that if the application preferences are set so that when an image is imported or opened in Affinity Photo, the first layer will be locked by default. You can easily turn this off in the preferences like I'm doing here. However, if this happens, you still have to go and unlock the image so that you can manipulate it. To do this, you'll need to select the layer from the Layer Studio palette and hit the little lock button on the right side of the layer itself. Step 2. Next, we go to the Adjustment Studio on the right. That's the fifth icon down from the top. This opens the Adjustment Studio, and then we can select the first item on the list, black and white. And now we have our black and white image. Sort of. However, doing this does not remove all the color information because it's still there. What you're seeing is a non-destructive, unaltered, desaturated color image, just like the HSL adjustment tool did before. We need to correct for this. The adjustment layer must be calibrated to remove all the color values below it. Before we get to the magic part and the whole reason why you're here, please remember to hit that subscribe button down below. It helps out the channel and lets you see all the great content that's here and on the way. Thanks. And now, step three. To completely remove the color values, you should have noticed a palette window open up at the bottom of your screen. You'll see six accent colored circles. These represent the RGB CMY combined color space or red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Note that black is not a color in this space. What we want to do is set all of these values to zero, just like you see me doing here. With that done, we almost have our black and white image ready to use. Keyword in that sentence, almost. Step four, there are two ways to accomplish this very last step of the tutorial. And in both cases, the end result is isolating the layer for later usage. Method number one, to create our black and white image, we need to merge the two layers into one, the adjustment layer and the original image layer. We do this by highlighting the two layers and then going to the layer control drop-down menu, which looks like a document stack icon, which is just above the layer list, and then from there, select the menu item, Merge Selected. Done! Using this function isolates the layer as we wanted to, but it's entirely destructive and doesn't allow us full control over the layer should we want to come back later on and modify some of the adjustments that we've generated. In short, it's not desirable. If, however, we selected Merge Visible from the dropdown, this would create a usable third layer that we can then use in our image. 
What it does is it leaves the original layer and the adjustment layer untouched so that we can then come back later on and modify that adjustment if we wanted to. This is a desirable option for us to choose. However, it creates a little bit of clutter, seemingly so, which we'll address in just a moment. Method number two. This is a far more desirable method and allows us a great deal of control later on. We select the adjustment layer itself, and this is the important part. Hold for just a second and then move it over the image layer and then release. The first few times that you do this, it may seemingly not work or won't move. That's because the layer that you're moving has, been, has to be selected and held for just a moment. That's the important part, holding it for just a moment. When you complete this motion, you'll see a blue line appear over the image icon. You then release the layer and you're done. Phew! Well, huh. what this does is isolate the adjustment layer entirely from everything else under it. The reason why this last step is important using either method is that when you add an adjustment layer, anything under that adjustment layer will be affected. So you absolutely need to isolate the layer when you're done. And that means either combining the layers in method number one or confining the layer and the adjustment layer as we just did in method number two. Just as a side note in method number one, the way that we can clean up the clutter is that we can either delete the source layers or group them and save them for later on. If you choose this last option to save and group, then you have the option to generate a new third layer if you wanted to modify things going forward. Personally, I like to group and save, but that's just a Miles thing. And that's how we create a black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad. There are lots of use cases for this particular feature that I'm sure that you can think of on your own. However, a good one is linked in the upper right corner and at the end of this video. I hope you found this video helpful and instructive. If you did, please consider giving it the old thumbs up and then showing it a little bit of sub love. But if you didn't find it useful or helpful, then try setting the volume to zero and just watching the pretty pictures. Thanks a bunch for watching and I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video for Affinity Photo for iPad. Bye!